These are the main leagues in England. EFL League 2, League 1, Championship and the Premier League. So in this video, we'll see what was the worst team on each one of them since the beginning of the Premier League era. We'll see the most humiliated club of the last 30 years from the 4th division all the way up to the top flight. It's really shocking to see how bad a team can be. So let's start with the worst 4th division team of the last 30 years. And there was a team so bad that only managed to win 4 out of 46 games. For that let's go back to the 1997-98 season when a team called Duncaster Rovers broke a negative record and had a disastrous campaign. With over 6 different managers, all of them suffering heavy defeats, Duncaster Rovers had the worst 4th division campaign since the beginning of the Premier League era. Actually, not just in the Premier League era, but never since the beginning of the 4th division in the 1950s there was a club as bad as Doncaster Rovers. Right from the start, they had 5 defeats in a row, with a 5 new loss at home to Petersburg United. And that was only the first humiliation. Later on, they suffered a 4 0 defeat at home to Scarborough, 7 1 defeat against Cardiff City, and believe it or not, an 8 0 loss against Leighton Orient. 8 0, that's absurd. And the guy blamed for all that was the club president at the time, a guy named Ken Richardson, who had a terrible management, interfering in manager choices, having financial problems, and so on. The other thing is, we've got that unenviable record of being, if we lose today, the worst ever team in the league. This is Mark Weaver, the club's general manager, also blamed for this terrible run. So in the end, in 46 matches, Doncaster Rovers had only 4 wins, 8 draws, and 34 losses. They lost 34 out of 46 games, ending with just 20 points. In 46 matches, they competed for a total of 138 points, but only got 20. It means that they only earned 14% of all points possible, the lowest ever in the 4th division. But the most impressive thing was the number of goals, because they scored 30 and conceded, guess how many? 113, leaving them with a negative goal difference of minus 83. In the last match, the fans even made a funeral for the club and ended up invading the pitch protesting against the board. And this was just the first team of the video. We will see other 3 clubs that got humiliated. The most shocking for me is the Premier League one. So now let's move up in a football pyramid to see the worst campaign on the English 3rd division, EFL League 1. And for that we don't have to go decades in the past, but to the 2019-20 season. That season was marked by the lockdown, but it also traumatized the fans of a club called Southend United. Southend United is from the city of Southend on Sea, playing at a Roots Hall Stadium. And right when the 2019-20 season started, everyone saw that things were gonna get ugly. From match day 1 to match day 7, they literally lost 7 games in a row, with matches like a 4-0 defeat against Lincoln City, one of the worst starts ever. So the manager Kevin Bond was sacked, the interim took over and they got worse. Even suffering a devastating 7-1 defeat at home to guess who? Doncaster Rovers. Southend even had 2 players sent off and had one of their biggest home defeats in history. Southend was going through a lot of crisis and needed a manager with a big name. And for that they hired none other than Saul Campbell, former Arsenal and England national team player. The fans hoped that Saul Campbell could bring life to this team, but they soon lost to Ipswich Town at home, suffered a 4 0 loss at home to Oxford United, and many other frustrating matches. Campbell only managed to win his first league match after 12 games, but Southend's problems were much bigger than just football. In December, the players were not paid, only received after appealing to the PFA, and also had their February salaries delayed. Furthermore, Southend faced a transfer ban unable to sign new players due to their debts. The club was in a chaos and even accused of misconduct by the EFL. The situation was as bad as it gets. Then on March 13, due to the lockdown, the season was suspended and it was decided to finish like that. So Southend played 35 matches, where they only won 4, drew 7 and lost 24. Dude, 24 losses in 35 games, finishing with only 19 points, only 18% of all points possible and he only scored 39, conceding 85, a campaign the fans want to forget. Now let's move on to the championship, the second tier of English football. And to see this worst campaign, let's go to the 2016-17 season. And that championship was big, featuring teams like Newcastle, Brighton, Leeds United and even Aston Villa. But the club that caught everyone's attention was one that conceded almost 100 goals, Rotherham United. 
They are a team from the city of Rotherham and exist for almost 100 years, but it was in the 2016-17 season that they made the worst campaign. In fact, they started the season well, drawing the first match against Wolves and had their first victory right in the fourth round. But after that, it went from bad to worse. Under the manager, Alan Stubbs, they went on a sequence of 9 games without winning and fell to the rock bottom of the league. So after just 5 months in charge, he was sacked. It's not normal for a coach to stay for such a short time, but the following guy was even worse. This next manager was a guy named Kenny Jacket, who signed a 3 year contract. The fans hoped that he would make the team play better again. But right in the first match, they lost to Reading, then drew and lost other 3 matches in a row. In 5 matches, Rodham only earned 1 point. So in just 39 days in charge, Kenny Jacket resigned. He terminated his contract and left with only 5 games played. Never had a coach stayed so little time in the club. So there was still more than half of the championship to be played and Rotherham was taken over by the caretaker manager Paul Warren. This guy had been at the club for years and now had the challenge of getting them out of the bottom of the league. And it seemed he would make it, cause right in his second match they won against Queen's Park Rangers. Then after 2 games they won again, this time against Wigan and won against Norwich too. Paul Warren managed to win 3 times. Could they escape the relegation zone? Well, no. Right after that victory, they suffered a 4-0 defeat and rather entered the sequence of matches so bad that probably will never happen again. They suffered a 5-0 defeat from Cardiff City, 5-1 against QPR, 4-2 against Brentford and simply couldn't defeat anyone. At most they drew and stayed in a sequence of 17 games without winning. It was 98 days, 3 months without a single win until they finally won against Ipswich Town, but it was too late and Rotherham was relegated with a worse campaign. In 46 matches, they only had 5 wins, 8 draws and 33 losses. They even scored 40 goals, but the defense was by far the worst, conceding 98, an average of 2 goals per game. So they were relegated with only 23 points. They competed for 138, but only reached 23 which gives a points percentage of only 16%. But this campaign is actually quite good if we compare it to the worst team in the history of the Premier League. Yes, the worst campaign happened in the strongest league. This campaign was so bad that it's literally impossible to repeat. And to see that, let's go back to the 2007-2008 season. In that season, there were very good teams, like Alex Ferguson's Man United with Ronaldo and Lampard's Chelsea. But there was a club that broke negative records and never played in the Premier League again. Derby County. Derby had just returned to the top flight and their goal was to at least stay in the Premier League, managed by a coach named Billy Davis. And then they went to the first round, the debut against Portsmouth and they drew. In the first game, they already scored two goals. But in the following matches, they suffered a lot, losing four games in a row including a 4-0 against Tottenham and 6-0 against Liverpool. Derby was already considered the most likely team to be relegated, until they managed to beat Newcastle. They had their first victory. But in the next match against Arsenal, another humiliation. 5-0. At this point, the fans were blaming the club's directors for not investing enough, which caused the departure of the chairman. Even so, the manager Billy Davis remained in charge. But not for long. He couldn't win another game and had a sequence of 4 consecutive defeats, including a 5-0 against West Ham at home. So after that loss and another home defeat, the manager agreed on leaving the club. Now they had to find another coach and the fans placed their hope in a manager named Paul Jewell. And with Jewell, the team improved, but they started to suffer with late goals. Against Sunderland, they were drawing until they conceded a goal at stoppage time. Against Newcastle, they conceded an equalizer at the 87th minute and against Bolton, they lost 1-0 with a goal at 90 plus 1. So even bringing on new players, after several defeats, they were losing hope. Derby was far from escaping relegation and started to have disastrous defeats again. They lost 3-0 at home to Tottenham and when they went to face Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, they lost 6-1 with 4 goals conceded in 15 minutes. Then in the next 2 games, they still couldn't win. So in March, it was confirmed. Derby County was relegated. The season only ended in May. For the first time in history, a team was relegated in March. 
so now Derby no longer had the hope of staying and got even worse. In the last 6 games of the season, they lost all of them, suffering their biggest defeats. They lost to Arsenal, 6-2 at home and 6-0 at home against Aston Villa, the biggest home defeat in Derby's history. And in the last round, another defeat, 4-0 at home. They really broke records. In 38 matches, they had 8 draws, 29 losses and only 1 victory. They won only 1 out of 38 games, something that had never happened in England's top flight. Never, in over 120 years. They also had the fewest number of goals scored and the highest number of goals conceded. Only scored 20 and conceded 89. So in the whole season, they only made 11 points. Derby competed for 114, but only made 11. 9% of points achieved. They finished 24 points behind the second relegated team. After that, Derby County never returned to the Premier League and now competes in the third division. So did you like this video? Comment down below and check out this other one that I posted. I think you're gonna like it. Thank you and bye.